welcome back to the podcast today we are here with david menken uh the voice of breach in the video game valorant how are you doing today i'm pretty good thank you i'm in london so it is uh kind of late when when we're recording and it's you're in the states right yes so yes i'm in the uh, middle of the united states the middle okay fine so it's it's uh it's probably still light out where you are but yeah that doesn't bother us <laughs> um i was actually i was because i hear your voice and stuff and I, I watched um other interviews but you were okay correct me if i'm wrong you were born in norway yeah so my dad's from new jersey my mother's norwegian um and i was born in norway but um my dad's job made made us move around the world and uh, so the easiest way to deal with that was to put me in sort of an American international school system. Mm -hmm. So I sort of grew up with Americans and well, people from around the world, but we had like an American education and that's why I sounded, I ended up sounding like this. Okay. Yeah. But, I, but yeah, yeah. I, I speak, I speak, uh, I speak the Norwegian as well. So yeah. I, I was going to ask about uh, the accent because you don't seem, well, I mean, you do have, you have an American sort of yeah. accent uh i don't want to say you don't have an accent because that's but yeah, <laughs> yeah i know exactly I know. um yeah. y so i it's it's crazy to me because i i you know i see you born in norway i didn't expect you to speak how you speak and uh so did you where did you did you grow up in norway so I grew up uh, like uh up in well when I was a little kid mm -hmm. we uh, we lived in Africa for a bit um so I lived in Norway then I lived in Africa for a bit I've lived in New York for a bit uh but most of my sort of formative years were just outside London in um a place called Surrey and uh it's like where where Wimbledon is where they play oh, yeah. tennis and stuff yeah so um that's where I grew up but um kind of the thing was that if you didn't so I mean I probably had like a bit of a Norwegian accent when I when I came uh to the school but it was sort of beat out of me or at least bullied out of me um I, you, you sort of had to have an American accent in order to to uh to make friends mm -hmm. uh, at that school at that time anyway I don't know what it's like now but uh but yeah so and the thing is to fit in you know when you're a kid you try to sound like everybody else so mm -hmm. Um, and my dad, you know, he sound he sounds like this, so yeah. it was very easy to 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 pick up on. Um, and when so like when I was really young, yeah, I spoke Norwegian mostly. But when when I sort of started going to international schools, my parents made sure that we spoke English at home uh, around the dinner table and stuff like that, just to make sure that my English was as good as possible. And I did like I was in. E L E uh, E S L, which is English as a second language. I think I took it for like six months, and then I was like, "I'm in." <laughs> uh, and uh, and then um, yeah, and my spelling tests were better than all the Yanks, so uh, so I was fine. <laughs> uh, uh, how how does that, uh, you know, growing up different places, like moving around? I I speak to a lot of people. A lot of the Valorant cast is you know from different areas of the world, but they also have moved around a lot and been able to experience different cultures. Do you think that's um, like crucial to, you know, be able to open your eyes about different cultures? And Yeah, I think so. Um, I am something that's called a third culture kid and mm -hmm. it's a classification. It's if you look it up on Wikipedia, you'll find it there. Um, it, I think it was a classification made for like army brats and stuff like that. So people who moved around a lot, yes. but, um, but it also refers to people like me who have moved around the world and then sort of get dumped in places or live in places where a lot of people from a lot of other cultures come and then sometimes jump away again. So, um, the, the thing they say about people like me is that you can sort of drop us anywhere and we'll make friends and we'll, we'll, um, we'll sort of try to at least we won't we won't like be part of the culture but we'll try to to learn as much about the culture as possible and like you could you could kind of like have me at an ambassador's reception and you can drop me in a favela and hopefully i i think that i'd make friends in both um i have friends from 
all over the place from uh, all kinds of like social, social, social stature. Um, I, I'm, I, I, you know, I went to school with princes, you know, mm. um, and then at the same time, you know, I, I was, uh, people were at the school where, you know, their mom was driving a really beat up old car. Mm. Um, so, uh, it just didn't matter. It was just the fact that these were the kids of people who, um, whose companies had sent them overseas mainly. So, yeah, but it was, uh, it was also like it, the school that I went to was, um, like the most expensive boarding school in the UK or in England, I think. So like even more than, than all those ones that like Prince William and Prince Harry went to and stuff. It's, it was crazy. It was, uh, this massive campus and I, I'm really, really lucky that I got to go there. So you, um, you enjoyed the fact that you got to grow up over there and go to that, you know, expensive I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I have, first of all, like, thanks to Facebook, I now have friends all over the world, <laughs> but, but when I, cause I'm kind of old when I, when I left high school, uh, Facebook didn't exist yet. So it was really difficult to keep in contact with each other. We had email and stuff like that, but you know, sort of people slip away. Mm -hmm. But, um, the amazing thing is that like pretty much any country that I go to in the world, I will meet, I can meet up with somebody that I went to school with, which is nuts. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Um, and, um, and that's, that's pretty awesome. And it's, it has turned me into uh, the person I am. I feel that, that, um, because, because I sort of had to, um, uh, sort of change a little bit to fit in, in any kind of situation, it kind of helped me as an actor. Mm -hmm. Um, because I feel that, that instead of trying to become another person, I try to make the character sort of fit into who I am. And then I sort of make the two meet. That's a bit, maybe a little bit technical, but, um, but as an actor, I think that my upbringing, uh, my weird overseas uh, international melting pot up upbringing was super, super helpful. And I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. I, the thing that I realized like talking, cause I, I would say that the most exposure I got was just my online presence to n not different cultures, but just even different states in the United States, which is such a minuscule, you know, thing on the, in the grand scheme of things. But like once this has really opened my eyes, when I started talking to people who, you know, I never talked, I probably never met anyone from Norway before doing this interview. Or like I probably like walk past someone or something, but like I've never spoke to anyone, you know, who was born there. And so like speaking to the voice actors of Valorant, you know, we you have people from, you know, Brazil or Ghana or just all these different things that I get to just it's so selfish for me to just be able to sit here and just like pick your brain and I, I just love it. I, I love being able to be the one who's, you know, being exposed to this and it's super cool but that's a, that's the great thing about the internet and yeah and like one of the one of the like the few amazing things about the internet <laughs> the few, um, yes. yeah yeah uh there's a lot of shitty stuff too but um <laughs> but um but it used to be the, the fact that if you know it sort of to cure bigotry you should travel that's what mm -hmm. people said um and like the the key to opening your mind is to have a passport and of course a lot of people don't have the ability to do that they don't have the money and the facilities and and, and the you know the parent like parents to help them fly and all that kind of stuff but what's amazing is that is that a lot of people now just get to sit in their own room and get to travel around the world mm -hmm. and um and i think that that's kind of a thing that that sort of hasn't really that governments haven't really noticed yet and politicians definitely haven't noticed yet, which is that, um, the younger generations are, um, are a lot more open-minded when it comes to other cultures and stuff like that. I mean, you play some games and that's definitely not the case. Misogyny and, you know, racism is rife, but I, I do think that, um, that the, the ability that we have to just switch our computer on and talk to somebody in any country in the world is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm, I'm so glad that you have the opportunity and I'm, I'm so glad that, you, that it's probably something that maybe 
if you have like an older sibling or or uh, or your parents even probably haven't had that kind of access mm -hmm. to. it's it's that that's just the thing like i for as long as i can remember like i'm i'm only 19 so like growing up this is you know like i said for the longest as long as i can remember it's the internet you know and not everyone has had that luxury of uh, i mean what I, there's different schools of thought when it comes to if it's a you know a complete luxury with the you know pros and cons of it but i mean it's all i know and it's it's crazy to me like i mean the fact that we're on a zoom call and you're in a completely different country and yeah. it's and it's crazy you know um, i know and that, that's the thing and i i noticed that i noticed that a lot of ga gamers in in europe you know they start they start their day late so that they can make sure that they get the american audiences in and mm -hmm. um and i see that like we're you know all our days are sort of melding together because of because of our jobs i sometimes when i have to do um link ups with la to work thankfully i've got my home studio um but sometimes i it ends up with me having to go into a studio here in london really late mm -hmm. and um because because now it's just sort of expected that you are available to the um, the place that has the that's giving you the opportunity mm -hmm. and um it's but it is yeah it is nuts that we're we're sitting i'm sitting in you know in the middle of london and you're in, in the midwest is yeah right? i'm in i'm in iowa iowa okay wow yeah, yeah. that's that's um, even crazier right <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> I'm surrounded by cornfields right now. <laughs> I was I was gonna I was gonna ask, but I was like I was like no, that's gonna sound really bad. No, but, uh, no. so you're surrounded by cornfields. Got it. I'm okay. surrounded yeah. by cornfields. So I've I've probably flown over your house. Uh, that's Maybe. That. <laughs> yeah, probably. If you've ever I'm flown. Sorry, I haven't been to I haven't been to the amazing state of Iowa yet, but uh, I'll make it a, I'll make it a, a point to do so. Yes, yeah, so if you ever if you ever come this way, let me know, and uh, sure. I'll show you the the great state of Iowa. <laughs> show you around um you Thanks. did say uh sorry to cut you off if you're gonna no. um i you are you are probably working on la time quite a bit and i know or i mean i don't know how much but i do hear that a lot that you have to be available for los angeles and you know some time zones are easier than others and i'm sure yours isn't <laughs> too amazing um but how how is that do you do you work for that a lot do you work for la a lot i i do i do a bit um mm -hmm. i worked i worked on something last week um but it's, it doesn't happen all, like all the time because of course um the uh a lot of games are you know they, they find their casts in the states and i'm based i'm based in the uk so i am i'm sort of part of a sort of stable of actors that are that go into studios here for um mm -hmm. that get recorded for a lot of the, the big games um that just might be because part of the creative team are, are over here or there's like a budgeting issue where um a lot more of the budget is to the london office kind of thing mm -hmm. um sometimes it's both but um i mean huh, let's let me think i will like I try not to be available until like one, two o'clock in the morning, most days, because, because I also then have to get up and start work here in London the next day. So if I worked for both like a London time zone and a, and a West coast time zone, I would, I just fall over. So it doesn't happen as often. And what happens a lot of times is when, when a, a U.S. based game um, or animated uh, animated show or whatever uh, are recording over here. Um, they will usually send a rep over to uh, to record with us here. So, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes um, sometimes uh, we end up doing a, a Zoom call, especially during the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, things things changed a lot with that. Um so i did realize looking over what you've been in that you i i didn't know that you had actually you know done acting so is that 
you do do you do a lot of like actual on-screen work yeah i do i do quite a bit i do um so i used to work in theater mm -hmm. um until about 2013 and then um and then i moved over to film and tv i was very lucky i was in a movie called zero dark 30 about thinking, uh, yeah. the hunt for bin laden yeah. yes and um and then suddenly um casting directors sort of opened their eyes for uh, me as american uh talent in the uk mm -hmm. And then they and then they found out that I'm also Scandinavian, so they're like, "Oh, okay, all right." So you know, I had some opportunities there. But um, I started out as sort of what's called a day player, which is you just go in for like a day or two on a show mm -hmm. or on a movie, um, and then uh, and then as time went on, I sort of built up uh, some opportunities to work, you know, on uh, on whole films or. Uh, or several episodes of TV shows and stuff like that. So yeah, I've been working in the business for a long time. But the thing is that like I'm not I'm not the the lead actor in in a lot of stuff. So therefore, yeah, you that's why you won't you know I'm I'm there to make you feel like it's a real world. So I'm there to you know when I play the I usually play assholes. I don't know why. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I'm usually the asshole who, you know, I guess has come up and or, or I'm the, or I'm the, the CIA guy or I'm the, I'm the army guy. Um, but I'm starting to be um, uh, sort of hapless and, and sort of uh, the guy who uh, is a bit crazy, which is starting to happen as I get older, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been, I've been working in this business for a long time and I, I love it. Absolutely love it. And what's great is that I have sort of this double life. I, I get to go and do films and TV shows, and I've been lucky enough to do stuff over lock, uh, during lockdown. I've had more uh, swamps up my nose than I can <laughs> even think of. But, but at the same time, I have been able to do these amazing games. Like, like I can't believe that I started work on Assassin's Creed Valhalla after lockdown started. So I started underneath, uh, like I had like a, a rudimentary um, uh, home studio mm -hmm. with, where I had to be under blankets and stuff like that. That's that's where I started. And um, and then as time went on, I, I did some more cartoons. Um, and then I was like, do you know what? I really like working from home. So I, I bought um, a home studio sort of solution, which is, has been amazing. But yeah, I do I do everything. Yeah. And that's the thing. I had this like teacher, this drama school teacher, and he he was just like, he was like, you need to choose one thing. Um, and he didn't sound exactly like me. And mm -hmm. he said he was British, but my my English accent's terrible. Um, but he's like, you choose one thing, and that's the thing that you concentrate on. And I was like, I want to do everything. And I do, I do everything. I play little chickens from space in a <laughs> stupid cartoon, stupid in the best way, called Space Chickens in Space. I am, you know, I've been in Battlefield games and I've been in, um, I've been in, I, yeah, I've been in so many uh, weird and wonderful games. And, uh, and then I get to go and, and play assholes on TV and film as well. Uh, I did want to talk about uh, Battlefield Bad Company. Today. Yeah. So that, that is a game that I, not a lot of people know, even my closest friends. I hold that game very dear to my heart. So do I. Um, that was a game that me and my mom played, like, back, way back. And so Seriously? I, yeah. And that was, like, one of the... So she's How a, old were you? Were you were you old enough to... Not the references? Per, not, not purchase the game, definitely <laughs> not. I, that game came... I'm pretty sure that game came out in 2008, right? Or so, 2000, Yeah, I think, I think 2000... Uh, 2000 Eight through 2011 i think was like battlefield bad company and then battlefield bad company 2 yeah i think so the... i was i was probably like seven i've <laughs> i'm just gonna say that it's like seven so you found out about dallas cheerleaders uh <laughs> from uh from battlefield bad company okay right. um so and my, and my mom's not like a gamer she hasn't she hasn't touched a game but she did play she played like two games when i was younger and i guess that game caught her attention she played through the campaign and that was that's just a memory that that's such a core memory in my life that battlefield bad company and i was that 
that made me so happy to see that on your IMDb. Holy shit. This is amazing. So that was my big, that was my big first lead in a game. Yeah. Uh, so I played Preston Marlowe and he was sort of the guy, the guy that gets to join these crazy, this crazy uh, company. And, uh, and then um, uh, they become like the perfect team. But what, what was special about that game was that it sort of changed narrative game playing um, because they, they made it funny. Uh, they made it, they made it about like, um, you, you know, you, they didn't want you to, to press X to get through, to get through the, the cutscene. They wanted you to, to, to watch the cutscene because it was funny. And then, and at the same time, when you were running around and you were shooting people and stuff like that, the dialogue still kept going. So that, mm -hmm. so you had sort of, it was like the first time that you had the cutscene sort of melding into, into the, it probably wasn't the first time someone, some asshole's gonna write a comic. <laughs> it's not the first time that happened, but but it was it was sort of uh, this uh, this amazing sort of turning point, um, and um, it was it was just so special. And um, and the thing was that you know there wasn't a lot of sort of um, this kind of stuff that we're doing right now didn't exist. I think that if we if we had then it would have been even bigger. But people didn't. Like people saw, have been seeking us out for years, going. We heard that there was going to be a next game and stuff. And and um, David Goldfarb, who wrote who wrote the script, um, he um, he's like he says it's like one of the games he's most most proud of. And um, and he would be like, even though he's moved on to another company, he'd be like, yeah, I'm totally up for doing uh, the next uh, the next one. And all the guys who were involved in it um, were all totally ready to do it. Um, I mean, the the game was sold to um, like as a as a TV show to like a really famous Hollywood actor who was going to turn it into something. Um, I'm probably going to get sued for saying that, but it, it never really happened. Um, but it was it it was just the the best experience, and I'm so glad you had it, even though you were seven years old. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was it it. it any anyone who you speak to who who sort of was around and was able to play that game at that time, um, they sort of, I, as far as I know, like they really revere it. Yeah, it's it's an amazing game, and it definitely I I don't necessarily think of it as as immersing me into the gaming world, but in a way it probably did because I can't remember a game before that other than like just small yeah. games, but like that kind of set the tone for me that led me right into you know playing call of duty and then you know a couple years later i i started posting dumb videos on the internet and then wow now wow. now i guess wow. i'm here you're welcome man you're welcome <laughs> thank you thank you well <laughs> i mean the, it's it's crazy because people they don't i don't necessarily think all the time of like the people actually in like a game like bad company like there's voices behind that and i mean obviously i was really young but like nowadays in like a game like valorant that's all that's it's so cool to me you know to hear that voice and to think of the character like well now when i hear voices in valorant i only think of the voice actors like i can hear that voice yeah, you're you're a bit special because yeah. of the fact that you've interviewed <laughs> yeah. most of us. So yeah, but it's it's still crazy to me that that you were a part of a game like Bad Company, which you know I played and I loved so dearly. And um, also a little transition, mm -hmm. you've been pl uh, you've been playing a character. You I've seen you play multiple characters on uh, Thomas the Train. Yeah, that's that's so cool to me as well. That's I'm not downplaying that. That's very cool. And you, do you know I'm a meme? Do you know uh, that? Are you? Yeah, because so I'm. So um, because uh, because I play uh, Malos in Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Okay. Um, famous for being the first like uh, fully fledged swearing character in a in a, in a Nintendo game. <laughs> um, and uh, and they're they've got some hardcore fans. And then somebody was like whoa wait a second he also plays a, a train in thomas and friends and then someone completely got the the wrong end of the stick here and then and they um and they thought that i played thomas 
so um so there's a there's a picture there's a picture of thomas uh the tank engine with malos's face on it so um so yeah i've uh, i have been memed um but um it is it, i know i listen i've been I, do you know that i was scoop and bob the builder as well yeah i was gonna say bob the builder too which that yeah. is also a show that I <laughs> religiously watch. <laughs> like there, there you go. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it is uh, it, yeah, it is uh, especially Thomas Thomas and Friends. Um, there's a huge um, a huge fan base in that with um, uh, the autistic community, for example. Um, I know that the the series sort of helped a lot of people uh, when they were younger learn how to put emotions to how the face uh, what, what the face was doing hmm. so uh so i actually think it's a, a very important um uh, show for for kids who may have had a little bit of trouble with uh with knowing how to understand uh emotion versus how someone someone looks or or acts so um yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm super lucky that I've been part of these these uh, sort of things that have been um, part of of people growing up. Yeah, which is just nuts. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, you're talking to and you're literally talking to like someone that. I mean, not only was I like watch Bob the Builder, but I also played Pad Company, which is very weird. Which is <laughs> yeah, really weird. <laughs> Yes, because um, yeah, the fact that yeah, <laughs> like, totally like polar opposite. Two p.m. at the two p.m. It's like hi, Bob. <laughs> yeah, and then and then later I'm shooting someone. Yeah, but that's my career. So, uh, it's it's also crazy now. Like, I'm I have little nephews now, and mm. um, a lot of the stuff that they're watching, it's like they watch a lot of transformers and or they love you know transformers and superheroes and all that stuff and i had the chance to talk to one of the voice actor for omen is yeah he, he did megatron and i was like guys no. I, I talked to megatron and they're like no you didn't <laughs> seriously, seriously i grew up with that show yeah i mean i mean it was it was very different back then but but like i grew up with transformers i i uh, and it sort of started this weird thing because I, I'm a weirdo. So I was like, I was like, somebody has to make those noises. <laughs> who who does that? <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I totally wish I had a voice like his. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. They're um, all incredible. It's just incredible. Yeah. Uh, and the the crazy thing about like what I get to do now, which is I'm really annoyed that I don't get to do it in English, but I get to get you like from the moment you're born in Norway because I am. The voice of some Fisher Price noise as well. <laughs> really? Yep. Yep. I'm a, I am a sloth for Fisher Price. Oh, Maybe wow. not for long when they find out about the fact that I'm also playing all these bloodthirsty uh, <laughs> uh, people. But yeah. So uh, so yeah. So I have a little. I have a, a great a, a great niece and a great nephew who who uh, like they play with toys that with my voice coming out of it. So, uh, so I get you from birth to death. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, uh, we'll transition, uh, into sure. the reason why most people are, are going to be the, the title of this video. Uh, All right. Valorant. Yes. Um, so a little bit before that, how, how did you get the job and I, I can't remember. You were not on the O like when the game was out, right? No, I was. I was actually. I think I was the final, the final reveal, or close to one of the last reveals for characters. So, um, for each character reveal, they also revealed who was playing the character. Okay. So, um, so I wasn't really allowed to uh, to say anything until until. Um, Breach was sort of had his own trailer and stuff like that, and where they, you know, because they, I mean, they they made like full music mixes for each character mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They they Riot went all in, which I I love them for. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I t it was a bit weird because um I have an acting agent and a voiceover agent, 
And my acting agent got in touch with me and said, hey, there's this game uh, they want you to audition for. And so can you, can you do a tape? And, um, and when your acting agent asks you to do that, it's usually where you'll, you'll do it uh, in front of a camera. Mm-hmm. And um, so I set it up. I'm like, I'm saying these lines okay all right fine here we go so i'm like sitting there and i'm like let's go and you know um and uh turning more and more red and purple as, <laughs> as it goes on but i was like okay this, this is what they wanted um little did i know it was sent to the wrong agents uh, wrong agent so it was supposed to go to my voice agent and it was just supposed to be a tape so just just an mp3 of me doing these things um but um supposedly everyone at riot was like there's a video file and they clicked on it and there's like, okay, we got to meet this guy because <laughs> he went, uh, he went nuts. Uh, and that's when I was brought into, uh, to, they call it a recall over here, but it's a callback. Mm-hmm. And, and I got to meet uh, some of the team and, um, we talked about the fact that, you know, I am not Swedish, which is a bone of contention to some of the Swedish fans. I know that calm down. Um, but, um, uh, I let them know that I'm Norwegian, but I've played I've played Swedish characters on TV, and um, I've you know it's uh, it's as I can and I said I can do like a very Scandinavian accent for you, um, and they were like yeah great, and then I got it, and suddenly within a few weeks, I was um, I was in a studio with uh, with some of the guys from Riot, and um, and of course. Uh, the name of the game at that point was just Project A. Oh yeah. Um, and we we had no idea what we were doing, and I didn't. I hadn't really played sort of any kind of like, as they called it, capture the flag type of games. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, so how how much are we involved as as voices and and stuff? And little did I know that you know I'm pretty much ringing in people's ears all over the world. Um, uh, game after game after game. So, um, so yeah, I'm super lucky. Uh, let's talk finding that, that voice. What was that process like and how much direction did you get on where to go with it versus where you took it from, you know, little information you got from, right. So usually when you do any kind of game, you get as little information as possible because they're mm-hmm. so worried about sort of um, secrets getting out and they don't trust us, mm-hmm. uh, which, you know, I've, some of my colleagues, I totally get. Uh, not, not on this game, by the way. <laughs> but um, but um, for, for Valorant, um, what I got was sort of a... A rough drawing of what breach was going to look like and we got to see the you know we got to see the arms and we got to see uh his beard and you got to see like his sort of um the fact that he had as i would sort of call it a low center of gravity so i knew that i had to sort of go into my chest and mm-hmm. and sort of that's where that's where he went but they were they were like no 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 uh, and that's what that was what was so great about it they were like no we want light and shade with this guy we want him to to have a sense of humor we want him to um we want him to be uh, mysterious because we want you know we want to release information about each character in drips and drabs as as we go along but um we want him to be fun and we don't want him to be like a typical um, sort of gatekeeper or uh, like somebody who's or a blocker um, uh, because that was sort of the words that they were using to help me understand the kind of stuff that he would do um, because of course they weren't quite sure what the character like exactly what the character was going to do in a game setting mm-hmm. so they had you know they had very set ideas for the kind of um, the kind of things he, his character would have to do, and, and uh, somebody playing them would be would be using them for. But um, there was lots of stuff um, that wasn't sort of there yet, and I tried out loads of things for them, and that was that was amazing because I really felt like I think everyone probably has told you that, like I felt like I was part of creating this character. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. I'm giving myself probably way too much credit, <laughs> but I, I feel I feel like I was I was really part of of 
um, helping both them and me find out who Breach was. Yeah, that is something that I have um, heard, but also uh, multiple conversations about uh, about when you're doing a character to not always, you know, need that direction because they might not always know what they're looking for until you show them what you're looking or what they're looking for. And so it's just yeah. a, a, a testament to, you know, you as a voice actor and complete actor in that situation because it's uh, I, you know voice acting is not just about delivering the lines it's actually believing in that character and you feeling yourself there i mean i'm not a voice actor but yeah thank you because most people think that all we do is we go in we go you know oh, we do a crust of the clown kind of beep it up you know oh yeah i'll you know say it one two yeah. three times and i'm out of here you know yeah. that's not the case it's just not the case we um, there's a lot that goes into into finding. You know, you have to you have to make sure that that what you say doesn't blow your voice. Mm -hmm. If you you know if you have to talk or scream all day, you have to make sure that what you're doing is safe. Um, thankfully, I am really loud, um, so I uh, so it's not it's not that much of a problem for me. But um, but we we make you know so so. Dave and, and, the, and the people who were directing me, they were, they were so nice about um, letting me have freedom, but also knew exactly what to do to sort of lead me along the path to do what they wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you go into some, some recordings, the voice director will actually like do a bad impression of your voice, mm -hmm. like doing the line and you sort of standing there going, well, then fine, you do it. Um, but um, but for the most part, with the with like the really good games and the the really good uh, collaborators, because that's what they are, um, I, f I I really feel like it is um, it is something where they are expecting us to come to the table with with ideas, and um, and then of course and the goods, mm -hmm. it's up it's up to us to deliver, um, and. Uh, yeah, thankfully, I don't. I don't think I've been recast. I don't think I've lost the job a job yet. But you know, it happens mm -hmm. because people might do a really good audition, but they can't keep it going. Yeah, they. You know, they. There's like, I don't have the lowest voice in the world. I can, but I can bring it down there, and I can. But I can also, I can scream better than a lot of my peers. So, so, so I know what I can bring to the table. And it's, um, and then when you meet someone and they're like, yeah, let's play, come on. And then you, you come out of there and you're sweaty and disgusting. And, um, you know, there's spit all over the screen and you're like, yeah, today was a good day. <laughs> uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't appreciate the sometimes when, you know, cause I feel like now more than ever, I don't I, I will I don't think I'll ever understand, but I do get that there's a lot that goes into it and the the sheer amount like I feel like it's a lot easier when when they give you uh the freedom and then but also like a backstory and then you can invest in that character so it's it's easier to find that voice and then when you when you do have that voice then you like you are breach, so you better than anyone can tell where that's that voice is coming from, and and yeah. with the amazing people at Riot, with you know the backstories and and the storytelling, it's not just as simple as a five v five game, you know that you see. There's there's a lot more. Like even on the maps, the maps are, you know, Riot is so good at everything that they do when it comes to the storytelling with the characters and then the maps have their own story, like just all the props to them in the world to, to be able to bring. Do you think, do you think that anyone who was playing these games had any idea of what was, what was going to develop and what was going to happen? I mean, that's, I think that's what sort of shows how crazy smart these people are. Well, and the, and the fact that it's not weighed so heavily one-sided it's it's 
It's not just like a good game that has mediocre storytelling. And it's not just like a good storytelling with a mediocre game. It's like all these elements are equally balanced in the highest of tiers that yeah. it's just, it's incredible to everything that they do. And I'm not, and I don't just say that because I, I actually like with the, the videos, the cinematic videos, the lore and everything behind it, I'm fully invested in and it's, it's incredible. And that's, that's the reason I talk to people, you know, who do the game. I would love more than anything to, to be able to do a podcast with one of the writers or like something like that and just pick their brain on that, like more than anything. So it's, it's just incredible. I, I love, I love everything about what they're doing over there. Hey, get in touch with them. You never know because um, they're they're very nice people. Well, that's yeah. what I can tell you. So they're also really busy, but <laughs> yeah. uh, but you, ne you never know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you never know. Um, yeah. And I think they're also scared that if they let their you know their writers loose in a podcast with you, they might give away some state secrets. <laughs> but, uh, um, that's and yeah, that's why they won't tell us very much. Yeah, until I'd you know. probably be signing an NDA too, just in case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, I would love I would love to hear some some breach, and I I have sure. I have the voice lines. I I won't make you scream too loud just because I know it's late. I don't know. Um, oh, I scare the crap out of my neighbors. And yeah. All right, let's. What do you What do you got for me? That's that's the million dollar question. Um, I mean, I've got some for you if you want me. Yes, to... I, I I love right. I love hearing <clears throat> what you get. Right, well. Um, all right, well, <sighs> off your feet. <laughs> um, and, um, let's have some fun. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh yeah, you're nothing. I could have left my arms at home. <laughs> and, uh, the big one, of course, let's go. <laughs> my mic. My mic just freaked out. There we go. We're back. We're back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I do. Yeah. I do do this thing where I have uh, uh, all the voice actors. If you're if you're cool with it, um, mm. I have them say my best friend's name. Uh, so I have this big compilation. So I have them say yeah. it in their character, but then a voice line afterwards. Um, sure. But I I I do. You could just say, so his name is Techie. Techie? Yes. Yeah. So if you just want to say, like, let's go afterwards, or if you have anything else, I mean, you can do it, but I, I just something simple. Right. Talk, talk, Techie. <laughs> let's go! <laughs> Actually, let's do it one more time, because I did, I did let's go wrong, so I was out of bed. Yeah, it's... Tuck, tuck, techie. Let's go! <laughs> There's so much power from here. I can feel it. I can feel it all. Just woke up my neighbors. <laughs> it's fine. They're like, what is he doing over there? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, I, I'm just trying to... St There's a, My favorite are the ones towards other agents. Uh, oh, I see. Um, oh, oh gosh, what's the one for Phoenix again? Um, uh, uh, there's you got fire in your eyes, Phoenix. Yes, I like that. I, yes, you've got fire in your eyes, Phoenix. I like that. That's that's <laughs> good. That's really good. Um, so there's one where Sky says breach. I'm thinking I'll hit the gym later. You in? And then breach says so long as it's leg day, and then he laughs. So long as it's leg day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I love that line. <laughs> uh, that's that's amazing. I it does. I say this every single podcast. It does not get old hearing it. It just doesn't. Like, I... That laugh is genuine because it's just... There's no other reaction to me than just to, you know... That's part of why we do it. 
So yeah, we love it too. That's the thing. <laughs> and that's the, that's the, that was, that's been the really annoying thing about, about, um, uh, the COVID and all that kind of stuff is because we haven't been able to go out and meet people, yeah. you know, um, all the other games that are like this, they've all had a chance to go to cons and stuff. And I'm hoping that that's going to change. So, uh, the cornfields of Iowa, if there's a con near you, then, you know, um, uh, hopefully I'll get to, to come to one of those. No, whenever, if there's a Valorant cast going to any of these, you know, cons, I will, I will be there just in that, in that off chance that people are like, oh my gosh, like I did a podcast with you. (laughs) What's up? (laughs) Yeah. And I have a feeling our, our leader will be Carolina Ravasa. She's, uh, she's always just leading the way with everything. Yeah. um, Which, by the way, uh, I don't think this needs to be said, but I'm going to say it. She is so wonderful and just the best. She's down for anything. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, she is always that on and ready to go. I always I, I can't I can't believe it can't believe it yeah. always on that's it's she she makes me feel like I have no energy sometimes when I... how do you think I feel <laughs> she makes me feel really old is what she makes me yeah <laughs> she's just I think she's just you know been in it for so long with you know other games that yep. have done all the cons and stuff like that and She's, she just knows how to do it. Yeah, she she knows how to entertain. That's for sure. So. Uh-huh. Um, I I'm just trying to think of any other voice lines because the worst is when I get out of here, and I'm, and I'm like, oh, I should have, I should have got that one. I mean, I mean, it's uh, uh, I've got two more. I think I can do it. Yeah, spike planted, <laughs> dusted. <laughs> What yeah. the? There's this one that says it's uh, by in parentheses, but it's I know it's a different language. Oh, it's is uh, is it when I say hey door? Yeah, that's it, it. Yes, it means goodbye in Swedish. Oh, do you yeah. do you have any other different uh, some like Swedish language? I don't think I don't think I I don't think I say anything else in Swedish other than tak tak, which means thank you. By the way. Oh. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, that's that's what I said. Thank you, Techie. <laughs> uh, what about guns in my face? Just another Tuesday. All right. Guns in my face. Just another Tuesday. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so long since I recorded these now, so you you have to remind me of them. So. Yeah, no, oh. I, that's what I, I I get that all the time too. And then they're like, did I, did I say that one right? And I don't know which one they picked. <laughs> Yeah, that happened too. <laughs> exactly. I get that so many times. They're like, I'm sorry if I say this. I'm like, I, just, just, it's okay. No one's going to be like, you know, they said <laughs> the, the Tuesday with a different infliction on it and the game. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing. The great thing is that um, there's, a, uh, there's a gamer called Average Jonas who oh, is yeah. Norwegian and he uh, is coming for my gig. He does all my lines now. Oh. yeah yeah and i noticed <laughs> so i let him know and he was like oh okay. <laughs> stay in your lane Jonas. Yeah. i i love him as well he's 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 awesome he's great he's he's great value yeah Man. um talk about talk about pivoting from a, a opera career on cruise ships <laughs> to, to this he's doing he's doing just fine yeah it's it's crazy people are people are just talented at everything yeah. and then i'm i'm sitting here just talking hey you're asking good questions man so i'm happy uh i mean i'm happy too i'm talking <laughs> i get to talk to cool people uh, um, have i done let's have some fun Ah, uh, yes i have yeah um just swapping in new fusion cells okay my arms are good we can go oh fuck just swapping in new, just swapping in new fusion cells. Ah, shit. What is it? Just swapping in new fusion cells. Okay. My arms okay. are good. We can go. My arms are good. We can go. Okay. 
Just swapping in new fusion cells. Okay, my arms are good. We can go. I think. <laughs> I think that's one of my. I think that's one of my later records. I don't think. Mm. I don't think that was part of the first batch that I did. Um, but uh, but you know they keep on having us come come in. So is that? Because, I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if you can say this, but like, are you doing stuff for Valorant right now? Couldn't tell you if I wanted to. Oh, I. Good. Okay. I am. There's a. Is there a red laser on my? <laughs> <laughs> I am not allowed to tell you anything about what's going on. All but, good. Uh, All yes. good. You know. But I love my job. That's what I can <laughs> Valorant's great. Riot's awesome. Valorant is great. I really like working for Riot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the third time I've been denied a question. It's not like I'm trying to get, like subconsciously like you know try to get someone to get in trouble but then i'll just like ask a question they're like i i can't i can't, Listen, I can't do it i the, the the thing is though that we'll just like say something just off the cuff and then three weeks later it's in a reddit thread yeah. and, and then <laughs> and then suddenly it's 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 like oh well he meant that and i'm like yeah. i did not mean that <laughs> so i'm just gonna keep my mouth shut you're good yeah you're good. Yeah, I I would rather not be also intertwined with something. Absolutely. Yes. You don't want to be part of that 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 uh yeah case. Yeah. It, the, it'll the cost only, you too much money. Yeah. The only time I actually do talk to Riot is when I get a cease and desist or something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I would rather yeah. I'd rather not go down that hole. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> let me think. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, there's so many lines. Yeah, we'll um, get a, we'll get a couple more in here, and then I'll probably like think sure. of something else, and then I will I will let you go. But um, the big question is always just finding these ones that I would that I would like to hear. I try to get ones that I do hear often, but mm. sometimes my my arm or my my arms my my brain goes blank. Um. Mm. Let me see if I can find something here. Whoa. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's the wrong one. This is the interaction lines. I, All right, I, got, are... I got one. Oh, you found one. Yes. Yeah. Ha ha. When that brimstone sees me here, he's going to be so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> when that brimstone sees me here? He's going to be so pissed. <laughs> that one's hopefully good. that was the, hopefully that was right because I don't remember good. recording that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's absolutely the uh, the right kind of feeling that uh, Breach has for Brimstone. So, yeah, he's. Uh, I, love, I love the fact that every, that he just keeps on ripping on Brimstone. <laughs> oh, the Brimstone voice actor is. Steve is incredible too, by the way. Yes. Also, I mean, I don't know how Riot pulled it off because some people I didn't know of before, um, but everyone is so incredible. They they put a lot of work into finding people. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I feel lucky. This is I think this is a pretty good one. If I don't see any other ones, this mm. one's a good one to end off uh, the voice lines. Uh, damn, Jet, have you ever considered a life of crime? I have contacts. Let me know. Damn, Jet, have you ever considered a life of crime? I have contacts. Let me know. <laughs> uh, Once again, no idea if that's the correct inflection. <laughs> let's hope so let's just let me just end off that with saying that i promise that it, it sounded great and people are still gonna love it no matter what i'm not sure if that I'm one was not. right uh inflection yeah. either but i don't think it really okay. matters and what's great about the internet is that the comments will always let us know <laughs> they will and i know that people are also going to comment and say that i put my my face on 
Carolina stream and just ripped it because that's been that's been a lot recently. Is that oh. I don't actually speak to you. I just edit my face over you. Carolina stream. Got it. Yes. Okay. Well, well, I'm glad that they noticed. Yeah, I'm glad that they did too. I couldn't keep it up any longer. I was getting a lot of work to edit an hour of my face on and me talking to just myself. Yeah, people don't people have a lot of time on their hands especially these days so that's yeah yeah I, apparently i have a lot of time as well on my hands well yeah. yeah well good yeah i'm not very busy that's for sure so are you a uh, senior 19 are you gonna go off to college i am not i do i so i i live um with my brother right now mm -hmm. um which i i moved out of my mom's house in january of this year uh, I moved two hours away from my hometown, and now I live where, like, I live in the suburb of the capital of Iowa, which is not crazy, but I did grow up in Iowa, and then, so I live with my brother and uh, his wife, and then I we have two roommates, they recently just got married, um, like, I, I did say that to you when you said that you were going to a wedding, because I also had a wedding. That's right. Yes. Yes. So they they recently got married uh, earlier this month. And so I'm not just living with a married couple, just weirdly. <laughs> they just got married. <laughs> um, but then my... Go for, go for long walks, okay? Yeah. Go for yeah. long walks, yeah. My, uh, and then my other... I have two other brothers who live literally diagonal from me, like my okay. neighbors in a house. And then my sister and then her husband, All we all live here in this city so i got i'm i'm reunited with all my siblings oh, amazing. Uh, for uh, uh once again you know m my first brother graduated in 2009 so okay he's he was long gone and now a doctor so and i'm i do content full-time hey well you're gonna be making more money than him soon so don't worry <laughs> <laughs> the soon can come now <laughs> yeah, it, could, yes. it could come a lot sooner but you know i don't i i i assume that was you know a joke but i i really don't do anything for the money any like at all i just do it you know i still had that burning passion like from the day i started even probably more now i just i love being able to share my story because a lot of things have happened um, I'm, I'm very open and I advocate for, I am, I'm a type one diabetic and, um, I, I advocate for type one lives and I want to share my story and other things, uh, such as, you know, my nephew who is epileptic. We, we do a lot of stuff for that. And, you know, it's just everything in my life I feel like is tools to be able to help people. And that's how I keep a positive mindset and do what i do every single day that's that's awesome man i'm really uh i'm really glad to hear that and mm -hmm. power to you um i have um i have a family member with epilepsy so i know uh, i know how that is and i know how i mean i'm very lucky because i live in europe where having diabetes is not a um it's not a condition that you have to really think about Mm -hmm. um because it doesn't cost uh a lot of money <laughs> yeah to get insulin um so i understand that that is a very different thing in the states and also a friend of mine andrea deck she is a um she's an actor and she is a type 1 di a diabetic and she is also uh, an advocate and she has her own uh, i think her own instagram um about sort of helping people feel uh, proud about sort of showing um i forget what it's called the uh the pack yeah just like pumps or uh yes continuous exactly. glucose monitor yeah yeah exactly so she's uh she's very open about showing that and mm -hmm. um and stuff like that and she's um and so she's opened my eyes on it and i think that um i think that it is a something that is hopefully going away from being seen as a chronic condition to something that is just a minor annoyance in someone's mm -hmm. life. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. Um, so 
uh, please tell me that you've that you've got uh, good uh, insurance and you, uh, you you get your you don't have to go without. Yeah. So the th the thing about it is, um, I I'm extremely lucky. My my father is a doctor and my brother is a doctor, so I I am very fortunate. But it's you know it would be very selfish for me to be like I'm I'm okay, like that's it. So let me just move along. I'm fine. But the the thing about it is I don't I I don't like to see that statistic of. Um, there's a lot of people who who die because they can't afford anything or they try to ration or they think it's a burden on their parents for them to keep paying this every month. And even even for me, who has the insurance of someone who works at a like I, my dad has good insurance that I'm under. Um, yeah. And even that it's it's heartbreaking for me to look at those numbers when i go to the pharmacy and pay like a You're lot okay. of money yeah just yeah. everything every you know every month or two weeks or whatever the cycle i'm on at that point is is terrible and i i couldn't imagine it being worse but the reality of it is it's a lot worse for a lot of people because a lot of people don't have the income that you know i'm fortunate enough to have through people and myself of what i do online you know i make money so there's people who you know make less than that but have to pay more than me which isn't right it it just it shouldn't be a factor it should just it should just be something that's covered and I know that that is a weird thing in the States. Um, I have a lot of friends who live there. My, my dad's moved back. I, you know, I have friends and family in the States. And the fact that they have to think about their health and they have to ration, um, well, pretty much everything when it comes to, uh, comes to feeling like a healthy person mm -hmm. um, is nuts to me. The fact that, the fact that, you have to, that so many people self-medicate in so many different ways mm -hmm. in in what's seen as you know the greatest country in the world um it just shouldn't be the case and, exactly um and i don't understand why it's politicized the way it's done the way it is because it should just be something that is collected through your taxes and everyone gets access to it mm -hmm. and uh, and it's, it's it shouldn't be a class divide um it just shouldn't be so um, I'm glad that you're uh, that you're advocating for it, and I think it's a bigger conversation than what we're what we're talking about today. But um, but um, I'm glad that you are that you're able to have access and that you're that you know it's amazing that you're making money off content in order to to pay what you have to pay. But I still say that it should be free. Yeah, and it's just it's important to mention because a lot of people don't. You know, not only do I get a lot of stuff for people not understanding even what diabetes is, um, that I, you know, quote unquote, did it to myself or, you know, just Are you kidding me. Uh, it's uh, going through the school system here with diabetes, you know, it, there's a lot of people who I, in my eyes, didn't treat people right. No, in, including me, um, who don't uh, follow rules set in play by the government with a 50. I had a plan called the 504 plan that allows me to, whenever I feel fit or need um, to get, you know, food or a drink that I need to survive, that I am allowed to do that. And I would, you know, people give you snarky remarks or it, you. Like they try to make you feel like you're burdening them like on their time because it's something that not always you can control. Like I usually before I'm surprised I didn't do it, but before podcast, I say, Hey, to the guests, um, I am type one diabetic. If something does happen, usually it doesn't cause I take care of it before to make sure that, you know, you have like a this whole time for you and for me to talk to you, but 
if there is something i will let you know and you know everyone is cool with it because that's it's a human thing uh it's not something that i always can control but you know in small town yeah. iowa you know two thousand people a lot of people are very you know tunnel visioned and they've only dealt with things in their town so when it comes and this isn't me getting political but like politic politics and everything like that they have this one narrative that they followed their whole life and they don't understand other sides to it or a different perspective on anything and it's it's very sad to see people just not be not have empathy for anything that anyone else is going through well i wish them knowledge yes and i wish them experience and uh however they may get that knowledge and experience is up to them but um, exactly but yeah. um i uh continue to be shocked uh, unfortunately but uh i don't know why i am uh, i'm sorry to hear that uh, to give you an idea of what happened when i was in first uh, first grade uh in norway we were all taken over to a cupboard and we were shown a bottle of coca-cola and a small bag of um of some uh i think there were some some kind of gummies or something like that and they were like no one touches these uh these are for your fellow diabetic students um and um if they start acting strange or anything like that you have to tell us because this is medicine for them that's what we were told i was you know I was six or seven years old. And I still remember that because, of course, there was a bottle of Coca-Cola that we weren't allowed to touch. <laughs> uh, that's so very crazy. I'm sure there's some place that is like that, but not all the places. And then that needs to change. And yeah. that it makes me very happy in a weird way that that, that was the case. And I'm glad that you remember that because it does... It does feel like sometimes that there there's not a lot of light on what not not what I have to go through because that that doesn't matter to me, but what other people and I I know kids who have to go through it, and who don't feel understood about what goes on in their body and why they feel that way, and when they say something to someone that they never will be fully understood on how they feel or the challenges that go on, not only mentally, physically, but just uh, mainly mentally, because that's not something that is shed light on the, the constant. Like if you, if you get to in your head about knowing that you're keeping yourself alive every day, like sometimes it can be very difficult to be like, this machine's keeping me alive. If you get super technical, it, it can mess with you and stuff like that. So it's just important it's so important to me for people to just know that it's there and then hopefully you know be a part of that movement to to shed more light on on the struggles that people have to go through not only with that but like other diseases that i'm affected personally by because mm -hmm. i saw the struggles that my mom had to go through with me like the sleepless nights that stuff that's that's different that that's not on me that's that's a you know mental toll on her so it doesn't yeah. only affect me it affects the people around me and i don't i don't want anyone to ever feel like they're alone and you're you're smart <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that uh, uh cuz it's it's not just smarts it's emotional intelligence as well and and that's uh it looks like you've got the the perfect package here so um so kudos to you and kudos to your family for raising you right thank you i'm i'm sure my my mom watches my tiktoks so i'm well, sure she'll yeah. she'll love to hear that someone well, thinks she hi, did it say right. hi from preston <laughs> <laughs> uh, um i i'm gonna i'm gonna end the podcast off here i think that was a good note we had a good talk at the end and yeah I, I appreciate you so, so much for even just responding to that the Instagram DM, but then being here and, hey, and talking. Hey, thanks for hounding me. me. I'm so glad you hounded me. 
Um, it's been a Sometime. bit. Uh, uh, it's been crazy the past few months, but it was perfect. So yeah. we we met at the right time, yeah. and um, and I uh, would love to come back one day. Oh yes, so. I'd love to have you. We can we can do in anything. Uh, I would I would love to just talk and and be friends. Collab. Yeah. Yes, we can. We can. Got collab. nothing to collaborate about, but hey, it's I, right. It's fine. You know what? I, I I do want you on TikTok, and I hope that hope that you can you know post whatever. I know people would love to have breach on TikTok or whatever character. Okay. If you wanna, all right, you wanna do some uh, Thomas the Trainer, anything like that, we would love to have you. I'll look into it. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, since I told you, uh, thank you in Swedish. It's duck duck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much i hope you guys enjoyed the podcast um yeah um see you next time